A short while ago I did a video on the Sony a7C and how it saved me money. Might have been a little bit of a stretch to say that. While researching that video I realized that there were very few long-term reviews of the Sony a7C which didn't sound like a sales pitch. So in this video I'm going to tell you what I really think about the a7C. I've owned it for about a year and a half, give you some idea about what I think about it in the real world. Now I want to do that by doing some comparisons. I have two Sony bodies right now. I have the Sony a7C and I have the Sony a7R4. It would be very difficult to compare the two of them hands down in terms of image quality. The a7R4 of course is going to do better. In terms of handling of the body, of course the a7R4 is going to do better. But I find the two complement each other and I'll explain why later on in this video. But I do want to come a few times to the comparison of the a7C with the Sony a7 III. Now the a7 III has been obsoleted now for a, a year or more by the a7 IV. But I don't want to take away from the fact that the a7 III was already an outstanding camera and still today will compete very, very well on the market. Camera manufacturers now are really struggling to differentiate their cameras and their competitiveness by how many pixels they have. I think for full frame sensors, 24 megapixels or thereabouts has really proved to be an ideal medium. My point is, it could be argued that a camera like the a7 III is now out of date. The only reason it feels out of date is because the marketing will convince you that you need to upgrade. A lot of the components inside the a7C, which we're talking about today, actually came from the a7 III. So the sensor, for example, it's called the Exmor RC more sensor, but don't worry about that. It's exactly the same sensor. It's a full frame 24 megapixel sensor, as is the processor that goes behind it, which I think is called the Bions processor. But again, who cares? It's the same model that was in the a7 III. So they took the basics of the image quality in the a7 III, put it in the more compact body of the a7C. At the same time though, Sony added the better autofocus system that was in some of their cameras that came in after the a7 III. While any camera today is just streets ahead of anything you really need when it comes to autofocus, it is one of the areas that camera manufacturers can still differentiate themselves is by claiming they have a faster autofocus, or more increasingly these days, eye autofocus or animal eye autofocus. For any wedding photography I used to do, getting eyes in focus was always one of the biggest concerns and sometimes could be quite a stressful challenge. I'm filming this on my a7C right now. Because of the puppy out screen, I can see myself in the screen and I can see that my eye, in this case, my, my left eye, is being tracked all the time for the focusing. So it's constantly focusing on my eye. So I know this is always gonna be in focus. They've got hundreds of face detection points. Don't worry about it, they've got plenty. But you do find that the low light performance for focusing is about one stop better on the a7C than it was on the a7 III. So there is a little bit of an improvement there. The viewfinder on the a7C is not very good. I'd like you to think and ask yourself what you do with the viewfinder. With a DSLR, when you were looking through the viewfinder, if it was a large bright viewfinder, you always felt more immersed in the image. I think the same thing does apply with mirrorless cameras where you're not obviously looking at the actual scene, you're looking at a display interpretation of that scene, which for me is hands down the biggest reason to get mirrorless cameras is the ability to see the exposure in real time through the viewfinder. You don't need a large fast refresh rate ultra high resolution viewfinder to be able to accomplish those things. The A6000 series of cameras, they actually had um, an integrated rubber eye cup which went around the viewfinder which did make things a bit easier. This camera does not and there is no Sony accessory you can buy to, to achieve that. So my biggest issue with the viewfinder is not so much the viewfinder itself, it's more the fact that I can't put an eye cup around it. The screen, well it's a Sony screen which means it's not very big, and it's not particularly good, but it's a flippy out screen. Sony will say it's a touch screen and marketing, but compared to a Canon modern touch screen or even my Ricoh GR3 touch screen, it's 10 years behind in terms of its technology. You can touch it to move the focusing point around the screen, but for scrolling through menus, pinching and zooming images to see how they look after you've taken them, no, you can't do any of that. But it's a flip out screen. This one's fully articulated. So for vlogging or taking videos like this, hmm. I can see myself. It's so much better than any of the other ones that came before it. Now, right now I'm filming with the a7C and I'm doing it with the 24 to 70 2.8 G master lens. You do lose a bit of the balance when you're putting a big GM lens on a body like this. And some people would say to you, well, why are you doing that? If you've got such a big expensive lens, why are you putting such a cheap camera on the end of it? It's not that cheap, by the way, still about $1,700. The reason to me is I still have a smaller light to set up that way. Let's talk about video. This camera will do 4K. It will do 4K up to 30 frames a second. I'm running right now 4K 24 frames a second. If you want to do 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second, you have to drop down to 1080p. Really, when I'm talking like this, I'm not really doing any slow-mo stuff. When I do slow-mo, I tend to be using my GoPro because it's usually something that's a bit more action-oriented. Also, when it's recording 4K, it's in 8-bit. For what I'm doing right now, with the sort of background, I think I need a new background. 8-bit really isn't causing me any hang-ups either. Buttons and dials. 
You know, if there's two things that people always give the A7C a hard time on, it's the viewfinder and its buttons and dials or lack of them. I am missing a wheel on the front of the camera grip. I would use that normally with my with my index finger to be adjusting the aperture. I would normally have the back of the camera doing any shutter speed and then the dial there on the front of the camera doing the aperture. But I find that the other buttons on this camera aren't really compromising me at all. You can probably around some buttons as custom buttons, but there's no question there's less of them. You can't really expect all the buttons that you'd have on a larger camera body. That's one of the compromises of a design ethic where something is smaller and lighter. In terms of overall handling, ergonomics and the Sony camera design language, these cameras send more of a message to me emotionally in how they're designed than practically in how they handle in my hand. I love the design ethic, the, the retro 1980s SLR look, and I would actually be disappointed if they were to lose that. Here is something I love though on all the Sony cameras. The power button is actually a switch around the shutter. When I'm holding this camera, I'm typically using on a Peak Design wrist strap. When I see an opportunity to take a picture while I'm raising it, my index finger flicks that switch that's around the shutter button. So by the time the camera comes up to my eye, it's already powered on. With a Canon camera, I've got to bring it up, look at it, do something else with my other hand and then bring it up to my eye. I much prefer that Sony system. On the subject of handling, how about speed of handling? If you want to go into any of the menus, this has the older menu system of the, the Sony bodies. At the end of the day, it's a menu system. You don't go into it that often once you've set it up. And then the ones that you do want to go into regularly, you can put all those on a custom screen anyway, so they're all easy to get to. The A7C will shoot something like 115 RAW files before it's filled its buffer and over 200 JPEGs, really. I mean, if you're shooting that many RAW files, you've really got to think about how much time you're going to spend editing or even just selecting which of those photographs you want to use. So who do I think would buy an A7C? Well, I bought it because it makes a great second body for me, which means I've got something smaller and lighter I can use for travel. But if you were just buying one camera body, I can't recommend this one. I would probably look at the A7 IV or maybe still even look at the A7 III. You see, there are compromises with this camera. It is a little bit more difficult to handle. It has fewer buttons on it. It has a smaller viewfinder. And while I'm saying to you, you don't really need a bigger viewfinder, if you've got the choice of having one, why wouldn't you have it? That leads me though to my recommendation. You would buy this camera if you're an existing Sony shooter with existing Sony lenses, batteries, and you want a small, light, compact body for travel. You would also buy this body, in my opinion, if you're a Sony shooter, you have all that Sony gear, and you need an alternative second body. Say you're a wedding photographer. As a wedding photographer, you really need two bodies. You need a backup body because you can't wind the clock back if things have gone wrong on the day. And it also means you can have two different focal lengths. And it also means potentially you can hand one of those cameras off to either a friendly member of the wedding party or your assistant if you're a really professional photographer, which I never was. And you can have them go and shoot other shots while you're shooting with your main camera. For anybody else, I can't recommend this camera. So as a backup support or smaller lightweight camera, this is fantastic. But as your first camera, I really wouldn't do it. So that's it. That's my thoughts on the Sony a7C after a year and a half of ownership. I love it. I hope you do too if you have it. Let me know what you think if you have it or if you're thinking about buying it. Thank you for watching. My name is Julian. I'll see you in the next video.